it's me. <laughs> hey, what up, what up, what up, what up? Mrs. Stewart here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, I'm just too excited. I shouldn't be this excited at this time of the night. I should be going home. I should go home. It's quarter past five. I should go home. But I'm not going home. I'm staying here for you lot. For you. To help you improve your grades. Boom. Okay. So, um, you've seen it in the title. It's all about John Hunter. Who's this guy? Who's this guy, John Hunter? All of you lot are getting on my case. I don't know who John Hunter is. Blah, blah, blah. Have you seen the wrinkles? Look. You're making me very wrinkly. Chill out. Relax. It's all good. Calm down. You can't really see it on there on the board uh, because it's back to front, because I'm using the camera facing out, because that's how I do things. But basically what it says is, what was significant about John Hunter when it comes to medicine and surgery? So I'm going to tell you lot what is important about this bloke, John Hunter. So, basically, John Hunter is a Scotsman. I'm not going to do the Scottish accent. I'm not very good at it. Um, but he moved to London in 1748, between 1748 and 1749. And when he moved to London, he developed an aptitude of understanding how the anatomy works, which is the human body. Yeah? So that's, what, that's where he gained his ideas of the human bodies, when he, became, he started studying in his 20s. Um, and he learned about the anatomy and showed a real understanding uh, of how different parts of the body worked. Yeah? My tie needs to straighten up. Come on, sir. Fix up sharp. Um, and because of his studies, he eventually became a professor, a professor of the anatomy. Right? So he became a teacher. So what's significant about this guy, John Hunter? He became a teacher to other up-and-coming doctors. A little bit similar to Andreas Vesalius. Mm. Keep that in mind. Um, so they're both teachers of other doctors. Yeah? Um, John Hunter... He's probably most famous for uh, teaching Edward Jenner. Oh, didn't know about that, did you? Uh, Edward Jenner got lots of his theories from John Hunter. And unlike John Hunter, Edward Jenner basically tried them out. But John Hunter is significant to medicine because he trained and taught the doctors that eventually became very significant to medicine. Let's go with this, have a look at something that he did do. Um, he did, um, other than teaching Edward Jenner, um, he came up with uh, new ways of improving facilities in hospitals. Um, and he created something known as what we call a ventilator. Yeah? Um, and he created the first idea of a ventilator, something that helps you uh, with your breathing. Yeah? Uh, it's really important, really good. Um, and that was in 1790. So he's significant for two reasons. Number one, he was a teacher of other doctors. He taught other doctors about the human body. And that is very similar to Andreas Vesalius. That's where they are very similar. Unlike Andreas Vesalius, he didn't really get into the surgery side of things when it came to doing live dissections. Yeah, and Dres Vesalius is different to John Hunter because he did live dissections, but John Hunter didn't. Please remember that. John Hunter taught about the anatomy, and Dres Vesalius taught about the anatomy, but also did live dissections and disproved Galen. He was one of the first people that, to do that. John Hunter developed new equipment to improve medicine, such as a ventilator. So they're different. In that sense, John Hunter made the ventilator, and Dr. Vesalius didn't make equipment like that. John Hunter uh, taught about anatomy, and Dr. Vesalius showed doctors about the anatomy in live dissections. Keep that in mind. I'm Mr. Stewart. That's John Hunter. Very short, very sweet. Just like Skittles. Peace. <laughs>